Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Let's get right into it. Today we're going to talk about Linux in the news for Friday, December 23rd, 2016. And to get us started, we're going to talk about a zero-day exploit that is really quite insidious and it does affect Fedora and Ubuntu distributions, or as some like to call it, Ubuntu, whichever you like. Uh, but this particular exploit is quite dangerous because it does use GStreamer, which is used for pretty much uh, any music playback. And basically what happens is it's using the game music uh, MU module that is used to emulate music from game consoles. And if you change the extension, this file, whether it's in a folder or it's a link or whatever, if it's played, the exploit does allow for local root privilege and full system rights so right now I can't be sure if there's a fix it's something we're gonna have to keep an eye on but one thing's for sure you do want to do your updates on a regular basis uh, to try to cover all your bases and you may want to consider not using GStreamer for right now for playback of mp3s the distribution is going to do uh, is going to use GStreamer is going to play back that music file. This is something that's browser independent. Later here the author talks about whatever browser you're using really won't make a difference. Uh, it will not provide you with any protection even if it has a built-in sandbox because GStreamer is being called to play that particular music file. So somewhat concerning now, typically with Linux and Unix, um, and I should say Linux in particular here, these types of things are patched very quickly, so just keep up with your updates. But it does basically show that the Linux desktop is something that, you know, people are making exploits for, and it is an issue. And although the Linux desktop has a much smaller segment of the desktop, consumer market the fact is uh, many Linux users are also running servers and other high technology uh, high availability systems so if you can get into their workstation you may get on the network where they have servers and other technologies so very concerning and another one from the register a chap by the name of uh, pornographer <laughs> Uh, finds a remote code execute bug in McAfee Enterprise. So if you were using McAfee Enterprise for Linux, here's the worst part. This particular exploit would run as root. It would claim all security privileges and there were no updates or patches or fix, fixes for it for six months. So this is supposed to be a virus scan uh, enterprise Linux client tool whoops and this particular tool unfortunately had a um, remote code exploit that could infect a computer and it would go right past the virus scan enterprise what this tells me is you you have to make sure that you look at all the layers of security on your system so you don't just want to rely on uh, for one thing a commercial product but you don't just want to rely on Vi virus scan enterprise from McAfee there are other tools you have to consider you have to have your firewall set up correctly you have to have all your updates in if you're running a server you should be running SE Linux that's very important you should have all of your users uh, locked down as much as possible now if this is a server of course there shouldn't be hardly any users on there uh, only those that are absolutely necessary for administrative work or user accounts that are created for a particular service. So it should be very lean indeed. If it's a workstation, things might be a little bit different. One thing to consider after you've got your system up and running and you're on a workstation that's Linux, you might want to ensure that SE Linux is enabled and then you could go into permissive mode and look at the errors that you get and make corrections and then re-enable SE Linux so that you get that extra layer of protection. And here we have another article from ThreatPost. So there was this uh, kernel code execution bug that has finally been patched after five years. So let's think of it this way. 
this particular exploit has been out there for five years and it has not been patched and the only thing that really was protecting systems uh, really if you consider it was the obscurity of the Linux operating system so it isn't in widespread use there's not a whole lot of systems to infect um, which is not uh, good security at all there's not a lot you can do in these circumstances uh, except don't use the software that is affected or block the particular ports for the whatever service or software is being used and do the best you can to ensure that nobody can get access one important factor about this particular exploit is it is not something that can be exploited remotely so um, you're gonna have to have access to the system all right so security aside which is really an issue as it is with any operating system if you are a Raspberry Pi user and you like the Linux based um, pixel desktop the desktop is now available for the PC and the Mac which I think is really awesome um, it's at least something that should be experimented with especially if you're going to be a Raspberry Pi user so if you have an interest in the uh, it's a little bit sparse of course but it's supposed to be it's supposed to run lean mean and quick check out pixel download it and add it to your system remember with any Linux distribution you can pretty much add any desktop environment you want to your system and you can switch back and forth very easily between those particular environments and choose the one you like best if you're interested in Linux Mint 18.1 Serena is here just in time for Christmas and would it be considered a holiday gift I wonder about that uh, you know it's it's something that uh, is really a good question would you actually release a system to somebody or give a system to somebody for Christmas with open source on it I did give my niece a new computer I have a video coming out pretty quick and it's a Lenovo Yoga 2 and I put Windows 10 on it now I went through all the security settings myself and turned them off for all the good it will do but uh, I could have put Linux on there but I really don't think that's what she would have wanted after all she's 13 years old so I think she's gonna want Windows compatibility but Linux Mint is a really good operating system it's fairly popular it basically is ready to go out of the box now I've been criticized for saying that before yes but aren't all Linux distributions ready to go out of the box and my answer to that is no if they were we wouldn't have Linux Mint right we would still be using Ubuntu we wouldn't need Corora 25 if Fedora 25 had everything ready to go out of the box so there are many add-ins and plugins third-party proprietary software that's added into these distributions to make it easier on the users with that being the case why don't I use them well I like the experience of setting up all the different elements myself so I know how to do it and that's just my personal opinion that's just what I like to do because I like to tinker with operating systems and learn everything I can so definitely something I'm interested in Linux Mint at some point I'm gonna download the distro and check it out again it's been a few years since I've looked at it but I will be looking at it again I'm gonna move this one up Corora 25 gurgle based on Fedora Linux has been released and again the whole point of it is once this particular distributions installed you're ready to go so I have downloaded the latest Corora 25 and I will have a video coming out soon and I'll be doing a review of Corora 25 so keep posted for that and finally and last we have a new kernel that's been released 4.9 officially and it does increase the AMD Radeon support which for me is exciting because I'm looking for a new motherboard an AM3 plus more than likely for my desktop and I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is get a newer Radeon card I do like the fact that there's an AMD Radeon uh, driver built into most Linux distributions and I know there is one for Nvidia as well but it doesn't hold a candle to the uh, actual proprietary Nvidia drivers so I've never experimented with the AMD Radeon driver except for uh, the AMD Radeon 
onboard 4250 uh, HD 4250 series that I have built into my motherboard and I know many of you are probably freaking out at hearing that uh, you know wow he's still using something that old and I agree it is that old but I have to say I am totally impressed with how Fedora 25 is handling that old chipset um, I can play 1080p without a problem I haven't tried 4k of course so I can't say how well that works but my critical thing was I have a uh, 4K TV and I at least wanted to get 1080p. Now uh, the NVIDIA card that I had in there was a uh, GT640 and that particular card could run my TV in 4K without a problem and I could watch 4K video. So I do miss that card and I'm thinking with a new board, a new motherboard, I would get a Radeon card in the future and see if I can get it back up to 4K on my TV. But as of right now, it works awesome in uh, full HD, 1920 by 1080 p So I'm very happy. Now, so the Linux kernel has many new additions. Uh, currently on uh, Fedora 25, it's still on a 4.8 kernel. But Fedora, the project, has been really good with rolling out uh, kernel updates on a regular basis. So course do your updates and just see if you got a new kernel coming down the pike if you have your AMD card set up and running well you may not want to mess with the new kernel right away there are times when if everything is going well I will freeze kernel updates uh, to stay on a stable kernel that's working really well and then wait a little while to go to another kernel because the older or I should say the uh, iterative kernels that keep coming out can at times cause hardware problems so that's Linux in the news for the week of December 23rd. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon again on Fast Gadgets.